It is back to reality for so many at the office. Some big companies like Manulife and Scotiabank have said fully vaxxed employees can return to its offices in select locations now. Maybe that's not what you want to hear. It's been two years of the remote work life, and here to offer some insight on the transition back to the desk or cubicle is employment lawyer Daniel Lublin. John Trugacos, associate professor of organizational behavior and HR management at the Rotman School of Management and Andrew Caldwell, HR Advisory Manager at Peninsula. Thank you all for joining us. Really interested to get your thoughts on this discussion. Uh, Daniel, we'll begin with you. Most of us were supposed to be back at the office months ago. Then Omicron happened. And here we are two years later. What if you say you don't feel safe returning to the office? Can you say that? Do you have the right to say no? That's now a more difficult case to make for individuals to refuse back to work mandates. I think we're at a really different place now than we were a couple of years ago. Anyone who wants to be vaccinated is vaccinated. Companies and, and the general scientific community have a better understanding of what you need to do to provide a safe work environment. And I'm not aware of one single case where anyone has successfully made out a claim for having demonstrated that they actually caught COVID-19 at the workplace. Um, at least in some time. So I think that's a difficult case to make out. I think employers may want to reconsider hardcore back to work policies because they may lose people. Um, there's a recent survey that came out that said people don't want to return back to work. And I think there's a different problem, which is employees can find work elsewhere if they're not happy with the, with the jobs that they have right now. Right. Employers have a, a lot to think about, and we'll get to that survey in just a moment. But I want to know if workplaces can mandate a full time return to the office. Is this a gray area like you say it is? I don't think it's a gray area at all. Uh, I think workplaces can absolutely mandate return to work. They just have to ensure they're doing the types of things that we all know by now and to, to, to ensure a safe workplace. But uh, there's no question in my mind that companies can tell people, hey, you got to get back to work. Mm -hmm. Okay, John, uh, Daniel touched on that Amazon Canada survey. I, I want to bring the results of that up now. Almost 1,600 office workers were surveyed. Here's what Amazon Canada found. Half of Canadian office workers say working mostly or entirely remotely is their ideal scenario. Only one quarter want to go back full time. The ability to work remotely and flexible work hours are now more important to office workers then workplace culture. I found this really interesting. Opportunities and in-office perks. It also found two in five say they would look for another job if mandated to return to the office full time. Also, more than half would be less likely to accept a job with a new employer if they were mandated to return to the office full time. What does this tell you about how our approach to the workplace is changing? What do you make of these results? I think it shows that the trend we've already seen unfolding throughout the pandemic has just strengthened, has solidified in people's attitudes and the way in which they can work. We know that people can uh, definitely be productive while working outside of the office. And people have seen a lot of benefits of doing so, including, you know, with all time high gas prices, not having to commute, uh, being able to have more balance with work and home. and learning that they can have the best of both worlds. And really, that's the key to the hybrid work model is that if done properly, it gives employees and organizations the best of both worlds. Be productive, get in to see your colleagues, you know, a couple of days a week and be able to be productive and, and work and balance your personal with your work life at home when you work from home. OK, uh, Andrew, we'll bring you into this conversation. Mm -hmm. These results were maybe not so surprising, but I want to ask you about the health and safety aspect here. What do companies have to do to make sure their staff feel safe? Uh, well, Daniel's already touched on this a little bit already, whereas that the employer is still required to ensure a safe workplace. So in terms of COVID-19 measures, those that have been used already can still apply. Uh, daily screenings and making sure that the sick days are being used. So if an employee is feeling unwell, they can go home or maybe they can work remote. Uh, now, the mask mandates are lifting in some indoor areas as of March 21st. So some employers may choose to limit mask use in the office, but at the same time, an employee can choose to use the mask while they're in the workplace. So it's the same rules as before. Make sure you have a safe workplace and that if an employee makes a claim of it being an unsafe, they really need to be at the office or in the workplace mm -hmm. to make that claim. They can't just make it arbitrarily from home. 
Right, so you need to come into the office to be able to make that argument in the first place. Daniel, the conversation around mask mandates is kind of interesting. We know the province won't be mandating mask wearing soon. Can workplaces mandate it? Yeah, no question in my mind that an employer can choose to implement a mask mandate or to retain the mask mandates that currently exist. Uh, and many of them that I've talked to will continue to have some form of masking, although it may be more relaxed than before. I, I don't think that we're quite at the place yet where most companies are going to say, don't worry, take your masks on, you don't need them at all. I think there'll be some form of hybrid masking uh, involved. And, and to answer your question, absolutely, a workplace has the right to continue to have a work or a mask mandate. They don't have to, but they can choose to. John, the pandemic has changed so much. Do we need a wide-scale return to the office? Is that concept outdated? Can we go back to the so-called normal? What do you think about that? I think we have a different normal. I don't know. You know, for some industries, it makes sense to bring more employees back. For others, it obviously doesn't. To the extent that, as an organization, you can provide your employees with additional flexibility, additional autonomy, while still being able to let them be connected with their colleagues when they do want to come back, I think that's the way we have to look at it now. Now we're at a stage where we've invested so much in the technology, we've invested so much in learning these new ways to work, that it would be um, you know, kind of going backwards in, in both time as well as in competitive advantage to just abandon these at this point. So I think it's really up to companies to find ways to continue to leverage these new methods we've developed over the last couple of years and really make it a perk not just for employees, but a competitive advantage for organizations as they move forward beyond the COVID pandemic here. Right. Andrew, uh, what can companies do to tackle what many have called the great resignation? I mean, people are quitting their jobs. They're questioning modern employment. What do we do? Well, that's just it. So you really need to take a look at the business itself. What's the industry you're in? What is productivity for that employer? And how can you rate it? How can you monitor it? Is it that it, people can do it from home and that you can track it and therefore you can you know, monitor and make sure it's being done. If so, then maybe the hybrid model works for you. Maybe the working from home works for you. What perks can you provide? What can you actually do? Because there's a lot of companies and recently there's some chat about uh, paid days off, how we have a bank or what we can do with those. And again, maybe that works for your industry. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe you need people at the office to continue to do the work where the people at who can be remote can be there. There's There is a certain level of privilege for those who can work remote and a certain level of privilege we have to understand that some are not entitled to. Right. And, and, and Daniel, the reality is that some employers will want to see all of their workers back at the office full time. They won't necessarily take the hybrid approach, although many are. And we know that finding and retaining good talent, that's a challenge for many employers right now. Do employees looking for a hybrid approach, do they have some negotiating power here? What do you suggest? Absolutely, they do. Um, individuals who are adverse to returning to the workplace, I think, can find other companies who are more than happy to offer them some form of flexible or hybrid work environment. So I think they have employees right now have all the power in the world. If you're asking me as an individual to come back to the workplace and I simply don't want to commute, I don't want to take public transit, I don't want to spend the money on gas, I don't want to be there right now, I'm fairly confident I can find two or three other job offers where I don't have to go through, jump through those hoops. So I think employees have a ton of leverage and they should absolutely negotiate the things that they want to see in order to take that job. Right. I was reading an article today about a woman who says, you know, no thanks. I don't want to spend three hours in transit anymore. That's not the life that I want. The pandemic has changed so much for her and so many like her. Uh, Daniel, do you expect to see some return to office complaints and where could that go? Uh, could that be a human rights tribunal or could a dispute like that end up in the courts? For individuals that return to the workplace, um, there'll be types of complaints that we normally see that happen in the workplace. There'll probably be a rise in bullying or harassment complaints just because people will be around each other more often. Um, but I don't think a return to the workplace itself gives rise to any form of discrimination under the Human Rights, uh, Human Rights Tribunal in Ontario or the Human Rights Code. That by itself isn't a concern for me. Okay, we'll leave it there. Daniel, John, and Andrew, thank you so much for your analysis. We certainly appreciate your time tonight.